Well, good morning and welcome. We've got a great crowd joining us this morning from across our district and several other states. We have a mix of funders uh, from banks, foundations, government, uh, diversity of community organizations, again, as I said, across the district and additional states. I'm Ariel Cisneros uh, in Community Development at the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City, the Denver branch, and responsible for community development investments. Uh, which includes CRA-related activities and investment connection for the district. So today, as you'll see in the uh, uh, next slide, uh, today we hope to have a lively discussion planned for you about the Investment Connection Program. Slide two, please. I'll be joined by guest speakers that have proposals and that have funded organizations so you can hear uh, their perspective, uh, perspectives. And so on the agenda, we'll cover the Investment Connection Program Overviews, start where we started, why we developed the program, perspectives uh, from our panel today, and best practices in Q&A. Uh, disclaimer, the views in this presentation do not necessarily represent the views of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City, Federal Reserve System, or the Board of Governors. So a significant part of today's session will be interactive. Uh, with our guest panel, uh, questions from you, and also questions that we've uh, received in the past about investment connection. Uh, the audience will stay muted during today's session, but if you notice, uh, you have a Q&A button bottom right, so you can submit your questions So we'll see. So by keeping this muted, you won't be hearing the blenders in the background, the hold music, phones ringing, all those kinds of things. So it should be uh, just hearing from, from us, uh, from myself and the, from the panel. So please don't forget to submit questions as we move through the program. Uh, moving on, so in regards to Investment Connection Program Overview. So we launched in 2011 as a program to address several needs and requests. Uh, banks looking for diverse CRA, Community Reinvestment Act related opportunities, housing, small business, financial education, workforce, digital inclusion, uh, identifying disaster related organizations, so forth, uh, as an opportunity to also expand and diversify uh, their CRA portfolio. In addition, for community leaders and community organizations, uh, looking for, you know, who to contact in the funding community for banks in particular in this case, uh, how to access funds because the organizations that were in need of funds. Uh, so that was so certainly part of it. We broadened it uh, for more funders than just banks looking for CRA opportunities to foundations and government. When I say government, it's state, federal, local, uh, county, uh, because it takes all the funders, in many cases, working together, depending on the, the uh, uh, activities, the programs, and so forth, so beyond just the, the banks themselves. So investment connections, basically the opportunity to educate and inform funders of the issues and challenges in low and moderate income communities and uh, affecting low and moderate income people, and the organizations that are operating and providing services in that space. So what we see is with investment connection is uh, a strong return on investment. So kind of low cost entry uh, for community organizations as far as uh, the submitting a proposal to participate with potentially high returns uh, as far as funding, uh, creating awareness, uh, in regards to not only your organization, but in regards to, you know, the, your area of focus uh, for our place-based programs and also this year from our virtual sessions that were required due to the pandemic. Uh, typical audience, uh, depending on location or venue, um, uh, 40 to 100 funders at one time. Uh, and then in addition to that, uh, the database that we have of investment connection proposals. So you can see that there's uh, various opportunities um, uh, for return on investment. So investment connection started as a place-based program. So it would basically uh, take in the request for proposals and basically 
those coming in would uh, be uh, have the opportunity to present as far as in some, many cases somewhere between eight and ten proposals because that's what uh, folks have the capacity to, to sit for. And think of uh, Shark Tank for community organizations but with gentle sharks, uh, sharks that basically want to help uh, your community, your community organization. In 2013, we started a searchable database by geography, uh, funding type, and area of focus. And in 2017, we started expansion to their Federal Reserve districts. So that has continued to grow. I'll have a, a map that I'll share with you shortly. Uh, and then, um, 2018, uh, we expanded to a new uh, searchable tool uh, that even just more powerful in regards to uh, one internally but externally assisting uh, organizations submitting proposals. There's a lot of features that we'll get into during our conversation. And also from the funder's perspective, uh, something that's quite helpful to, to identify those opportunities. Last uh, point here, as far as response to COVID-19, um, we basically sent out a request for proposals in March uh, 2020, it was actually March 23rd, with our initial uh, request for proposals uh, for frontline organizations uh, for virtual sessions that would be held in May. And by the way, all of these, uh, we've recorded those sessions, those virtual sessions, and they are located on our Investment Connection webpage. Uh, I, I, I credit, this was Tammy Edwards, uh, 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 senior officer at the bank that basically recognized uh, uh, what was coming and uh, the health and the economic crisis that was going to get worse in our communities and the LMI communities and, and, and population in particular. Uh, to provide context, in March, uh, the United States had 43,900 cases and 762 deaths due to COVID-19, according to Johns Hopkins. Today, we have over 13.5 million cases and over 268, uh, no, 270,000 deaths due to COVID-19. So, uh, this has been a, a, a very difficult time for low and moderate income communities and for low and moderate income people and, and people of color. Uh, we have hundreds of proposals on the site that are still in need of, of loans, investments, slash grants and services for uh, needed medical equipment, operating expenses, loan funds, whether it's for housing related activities or small businesses. And uh, certainly we'll go uh, into that discussion a little bit more uh, during our uh, Q&A discussion. So moving on, you can see the expansion of the investment connection concept. Uh, so Kansas City there in the middle, uh, a couple of caveats here. Uh, the Atlanta Fed, um, bottom right, uh, has not started their program. They've joined our, the working group, but, uh, uh, 2019 and, and 2020, a lot of, a lot of things, of course, occurring across the country. So they have not started their programs yet, but they're part of our working group. Uh, New York Fed, uh, completed a round of 40 proposals with their program of investment connection, Puerto Rico in January, following the hurricanes, um, and so over, as I said, 40 proposals that are there and posted. Uh, I'll leave it there for funders that are looking uh, for uh, connections to Puerto Rico. You can basically use the tool and identify it under states and territories, and you can see all of those proposals as well uh, in the tool. So and, uh, moving on, kind of wanted to give you some examples of our investment connection main page, many of you are uh, very familiar with it. Um, but this is basically for community organizations, as you can see on the left, it's basically the link uh, to basically start for submitting a proposal. And then on the right for the funders, um, I would say that Chrome or Edge is recommended. Also, we have found that some financial institutions have problems accessing uh, 
the site, uh, you may have to notify your IT department for access, or in some cases, I've had some some uh, funders that have used uh, their personal uh, computers, what have you. So, but that's on uh, your firewalls that uh, organizations may have in place. So, kind of on the next slide, you'll see. Uh, wanted to give you a, a snapshot of uh, the slide for submitting a. Uh, request for a proposal, and so on that you, uh, as with the funder side, you have to create an account first, uh, and kind of see it as a, a, a not a much here uh, in regards to the uh, proposal requirements. Uh, and you used to call it kind of a copy and paste. You basically look at you know information from your you know mission statement to your um, organization information, things that are often in your annual report already or other uh, grant uh, requests that you have made. This is for community organizations. Uh, so kind of consider it a low doc form in many cases. Uh, we do require uh, the most recent audited or reviewed financials that have been prepared by uh, your accountant. Uh, that is a requirement that uh, came up uh, when we were developing the program and the proposal itself, I will say we had a group of community development organizations and funders that basically looked at what is sufficient information to whet the appetite in regards to uh, what they would need to move forward as far as to say, you know, uh, so that they as a funder could express interest in what they're doing. So have some more tips and tricks and so forth in regards to going through that uh, proposal and completing it. And we'll, we'll also be uh, uh, wanting to hear from our, our panel members uh, as we go through that for uh, community organizations uh, and submitting those proposals. The other thing is proposals need to be CRA eligible. For information on that, uh, what we share the link at the end uh, in regards to CRA One Source. So we have videos, guides, other resources that talks about uh, the Community Reinvestment Act or CRA. And uh, so that is uh, something that is required for this program because it was uh, initially started for uh, financial institutions and their CRA obligations. Um, let's see what else I can, I can say to this, but I think that's, that's about it. You got to start with uh, uh, opening an account, setting up an account, and uh, then once you have it, the nice thing about this is you have the opportunity to save and come back to it. Uh, the other thing is, as I said, is, is uh, uh, many cases less is more. So we do have character limits in many of the sections. You know, don't feel obligated to fill it out to the last character. Uh, basically, tight language is uh, more helpful. So. On the next uh, slide, we'll talk about from the funders and um, slide seven. So funders, again, you're going to have to create an account and you're going to set up your parameters as far as for your search. And one of the things we often suggest is, you know, when you set that up, um, if you get too granular, it may not uh, give you as many proposals. So you, you may have to have some flexibility, but you're going to have geography, certainly state, uh, uh, counties and so forth, and uh, then the type of support, if you're looking at making a loan, an investment, uh, if you're looking for CD service, community development services, uh, if that request is being made, you're going, you're going to see that. It'll populate with that. So let's say, for example, you're looking at just loans only. Uh, you might, um, you know, and you don't get as many uh, proposals, you might want to expand that a little bit or even consider looking at, at your uh, geography, uh, area of focus as well. Uh, oh, and I will say, and, and we have it included in the copy on that slide, if you are looking for COVID-19 uh, proposals, you do have to check the disaster relief uh, box so that you can see uh, what might be there um, in regards to, to, to proposals. So all the proposals that we had that presented in uh, May, uh, would be listed along with all the proposals that we received and were not able to uh, present. So that is there as well. Let's see. Any questions?
I've gone through this fairly quickly. But again, if you have any questions, don't forget to submit to the Q&A box on the bottom right uh, in regards to either the uh, funder side or the community organization side. Give you guys a moment if there's any questions. Okay. All right. Well, as I said, I'm being joined by a panel of speakers and who have experience. Uh, so, uh, Steve and Nancy, if you can join me for this session, it's my pleasure to have Nancy Murakawa, uh, VP and CRA Community Outreach Officer with Pacific Western Bank, and Steve Radley, President and CEO of Network Kansas, join me today. We plan to have a talk show, uh, talk show format. Um, so they can share their involvement with Investment Connection. Welcome to you both. Thank you for, for, for joining us. Uh, Nancy, why don't I, I start with you? Um, you? You've had some success. You've found numerous uh, proposals uh, through Investment Connection. Mm -hmm. Can you share some of uh, uh, your findings and kind of how it's been helpful for you and for your uh, financial institution? Yeah, sure. Good morning. So um, as a new funder in the area, uh, one of the first steps we took was to connect with uh, regulatory agencies like Ariel, and we wanted to hear what the need in their community was. And of course, Ariel immediately introduced us to Investment Connections, and it right away became a very helpful source to identify uh, community partners. Uh, the proposals we found were well vetted, and since I'm out of state, I'm in California, uh, Investment Connection had done all the footwork. <laughs> you know, I'm supposed to be the boots on the ground, but I can't physically be there. So uh, Investment Connection was really grateful to um, to provide all that information to us. And it also made it a great way to make cold calls to the organizations for introduction. Because, I mean, if I sent an email out saying Pacific Western Bank on the subject, it's kind of hard to get the attention from the organizations. But if I start with, you know, Federal Reserve Bank, Investment Connection, proposal, you know, that'll catch the attention of the organization. They'll click it, um, click my email and not think it's a, it's a, an app or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so that's been really helpful. <laughs> Even making phone calls, I mean, without saying, hi, I'm Nancy Morikawa from Pacific Western Bank. May I speak to your um, grant writer or something like that? It's better, they're like, for what? <laughs> it's better to go off with, hi, I see your proposal from Investment Connections. They're like, oh, yeah, hi, you know, it's more friendly that way. It's just more, you know, it, it just opens the door for us. So it's been really helpful for us. Yeah. All right, Nancy, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I, I think one of the things that stuck out, though, is, is when you're calling from a from a bank as a potential funder and mm -hmm. the response is uh, you're, you're getting asked for what? Yeah. Why are you calling why, me? Why are you calling me? We already we have a bank. <laughs> it's like, no, no, that's not what I'm here for. <laughs> you want to talk to me. <laughs> I may have some funding available, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, yeah, so that, that, that basically, again, for the, the funders that haven't been on the site or for community organizations, uh, you know, the proposal has it all, as, as Nancy mentioned, uh, you're able to see, uh, who the, you know, two contacts are from the organization, their phone numbers, their websites, along with all the information on the proposal and, and what they're seeking. So, great. Uh, Steve, let me move to you, kind of, uh, You've benefited. We actually covered a story uh, in regards to Network Kansas. Uh, your success in, in uh, over nine hundred thousand dollars in, in, in connections. And again, uh, pleased to the audience. Uh, you know, Steve's success is not going to be necessarily indicative of everyone's success. Let me almost like the investment strategy, right? Uh, but uh, can you share kind of how investment connection has been helpful for you? Yeah, and good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> well, we started, uh, I've been, we had done a couple of pitches in the past. Um, you know, I, I still uh, on kind of in the shark tank realm and and uh, had not had a lot of success with that, but we uh, continued to push. I was talking to uh, Jeremy Higley, who's uh, another um He's, he's the Kansas representative for uh, the Federal Reserve Bank, and we were talking, and and uh, uh, he suggested that we uh, 
uh, work on a new proposal, and I, I see one of the questions there, Ariel, that I think that uh, um, on what makes a proposal CRA eligible. I think that uh, that's a really uh, great question, and I'm not going to answer it, but I'm going to answer it in the way that um, the more that you dig into that, um, the better the explanation is with the bank. And so, uh, actually, before COVID hit, um, we prepared a proposal and uh, and submitted it and got it approved. And, and the way that we uh, were able to use it is that we were, have been working on developing stronger relationships with banks um, across the state. Um, and, and so when we would meet with the banks, uh, uh, we would uh, ask them how important CRA was, it, and it became a very effective credibility tool for us saying that we've been working with the Federal Reserve Bank to ensure that our the funds that you provide us are CRA uh, uh, eligible for consideration, and uh, and that was very helpful. Now, um, I don't think it's like a uh, it's a component of a value proposition. I think the other components are just as important, such as you know what uh, what are, what are you bringing to the community um, as a resource. Um, how it, does it positively affect the uh, financial institutions in that community? And so I think the entire value proposition is really important um, when you are talking to banks. But we found that one-on-ones and talking to individuals at the banks uh, were important. And the other thing is our, our programs uh, have – we have over 100 bankers on our community leadership teams at the local level, and so some of the demand uh, of wanting to contribute came from the local level. And so uh, I, it's just been a great kind of rounding of, of building your value proposition for why a, a financial institution should support your organization. Terrific. No, thank you. And let, let me go. There's a couple of questions in regards to uh, – there's there's some that are kind of the, the mechanics. Uh, someone asking as far as they have uh, have to make a change in regards to their proposal and basically uh, uh, connect with uh, – there's the button in regards to the administrator. So check on that with your proposal, please. And you can basically – it would then be moved back to a draft mode. Uh, so that you can can make adjustments to a proposal, or secondly, you can if the proposal has changed significantly, uh, it may be time to submit a new proposal. So that may be an opportunity for you to consider that. Uh, two, in regards to CRA, and we've talked about it. Let me let me approach it before I go to Nancy because it, it, it is a, a CRA related. Questions. So, Community Reinvestment Act, again, it's uh, over 40 years. Some of you may be aware that uh, it is up, or the Federal Reserve is basically has a advance notice of proposed rulemaking out for uh, CRA modernization. I'll talk about that a little bit later at the end. Uh, but basically, CRA is for financial institutions, regulated financial institutions, encouraging banks to lend throughout their community, including low and moderate income areas. So, that's geographies that are 80% or below of area median income. There's more to it than that, uh, but that's kind of at the high level. Uh, so that's where I would suggest uh, CRA OneSource, our site uh, in regards to tools, uh, resources, guides, and so forth, and videos in regards to the CRA that we've developed and, and kind of my infomercial on, on uh, CRA OneSource. Uh, and again, that is for um, – I uh, want to make sure we don't – yes, we're focused on CRA as part of it, uh, and, and all proposals need to fit uh, CRA. But, again, government and foundations uh, that are involved in investment connection and so forth, that does not apply to them. Uh, that just applies to financial institutions. So, Steve, you kind of got us started with the, the, the CRA conversation. Uh, Nancy, for you, kind of – uh, as, as a funder, as, as a bank, uh, CRA, is, is it important when you're looking at proposals? Because I, I know that your financial institution probably does some things that are CRA eligible, and in addition, uh, perhaps some other things that you fund that may not be 
uh, for CRA purposes, what have you. Uh, yeah. But the CRA, how, how much does that come into play uh, for you so, when you're looking at proposals? So CRA is very important for us, um, especially because my role is to identify community partners that will help us achieve our CRA goals in Colorado. Uh, to ensure our success, uh, we look for partners that have a track record of mm. successful program development and that seek to address the needs of the community. So Investment Connection offers abundance of opportunities for us to consider. Um, of course, every bank is different. Um, our bank is not just solely uh, funding through the CRA grants or donation or investments. There's also um, other uh, donation and grants that we also um, offer. But always just check with your CRA officer um, of the bank and uh, just ask them, hi, this is my proposal. What do you think? And uh, that will be my recommendation. And um, yeah, CRA officers are very busy, so just make sure, you know, you, you connect with them. Don't just send one email and think you're done because <laughs> it just might have been, you know, buried under multiple other emails. So um, don't think that, you know, you can only ask for, you know, CRA-related investments, I guess, uh -huh. because you could just always ask. Every bank, again, is very different. Yeah, no, you know, and, and one of the things, and this this will come in in one of the bullets that I had for, recommendations or best practices, and I think it fits for funders and for uh, community organizations. And, and, and let's talk about the grants, you know, investment slash grants, because uh, always during when, when we do the community development trainings on CRA or I do banker training on CRA and so forth, I mean, we know the, the grant pool, regardless of bank, whether you're a, a $100 million bank or a trillion dollar bank, the grant pool is is the smallest pool of funds. Uh, so I often suggest, you know, uh, uh, both to the funders, you know, maybe there's opportunities for, you know, a line of credit or other services uh, mm -hmm. that, that would be helpful to the organizations that you're working with. What are your, uh, any thoughts to add to that, uh, you or Steve? Okay. Um. Well, I think that, uh, you know, as we approach banks, we, we found it was a, a wide variety on how critical the CRA part was. Uh, it seemed like the larger the bank, the, and I'm not a banker, so I don't, but the larger the bank, it seemed like it was more important. In fact, there were times I would be in a bank and they were going through their, their review, you know, while we were there. Um, and, uh, but I do think it's it's really important to uh, for us. I mean, we had kind of a singular focus on. Uh, we have some uh, a state tax credit that bankers can use as well, so um, they get a more bang for their buck um, when they provide. Even though it is a donation to us, they uh, they are getting a tax credit as well, and so. Um, it's like I said, it, it really goes back to our value proposition, but we've had banks. I mean, I was looking in preparation for this and, and, uh, we had, thir we've had 13 banks that have done a uh, total donation of a little over a million. Five of those banks are under 500 million in, and with the lowest being 130 million. And quite frankly, the, the uh, community bank that's 130 million is one of our, largest, biggest supporters and has supported us every year. Okay. Um, and so I think that the other thing just not to, is to understand what your organization provides that community. And if it's, if it's the value is high enough that you're helping that community move forward, then, then uh, banks of all sizes will look to support you. Okay. Right. And then again, CRA is not just about funding also. So, I mean, we also want to provide volunteer services to the organizations. And, you know, even if it's not, you know, financially related, let's say uh -huh. that your organization needs help from marketing or a little help from our IT department, we've done that many times. We have um, our a team of IT uh, folks that help um, talk about their career choices, or they even go to the organization. Let's say they need help setting up the printer. I've had, <laughs> I've had oh, our great. IT department do that. Yeah, yeah, so we're always there to help. I mean, all the employees, at least you know, that I know, <laughs> are very, very helpful.
That is great. So uh, I, I, I put it out there then for community organizations when you're planning on either you're, you've submitted a proposal or you're uh, planning on submitting a, a proposal, I, I, I want to make sure that, that gets uh, noted. Uh, so you have a lending box for, for loans, investment box, investment slash grants, and service. And what Nancy just mentioned is if you're looking for potential board members, advisory members, or some other expertise uh, in the Q&As, uh, CRA Q&As uh, that came out, uh, it basically expanded uh, that CD service beyond just financial expertise. So, as Nancy mentioned, uh, if you have, you know, your IT expert from the bank and they assist uh, 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 a qualified community development organization has, that has to fit. Uh, thank you, Jim Enright, uh, our examiner. Uh, you know, that would be something that would qualify. And again, this kind of falls under our, our CRA training for bankers and so forth where we discussed this. Uh, there have been a couple of things, uh, questions on can I modify an existing proposal? Yes, you can. We just need to move it from uh, final back to a draft state. If there's any significant changes as far as population served, then it has to go through the entire review process. Uh, we're looking at population serving. Again, we'll be getting into some of these best practices for community organizations and their proposals. There was somebody that asked, you know, what if, what if um, uh, funders are not interested in a proposal? Uh, it's kind of, um, how was it uh, worded? What if a, ba a bank, and, and, and hope you don't mind if I kind of expand it to banks or foundations or, or government, but funder is, is unreceptive to any kind of community funding. Um, any thoughts, Nancy or Steve? Well, my thought is that um, you just don't give up. You might have to come back to that one, but, you know, like, I mean, part of, you know, as a, a mission-oriented organization, if you, uh, I, I, I think you just continue to move forward. Some of it's timing a lot of times with some banks and other banks. And, and of course, we've been focused on banks, but we've also received funding from Kansas Health Foundation, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Kansas, and other organizations. But I do believe that... Uh, Sometimes it's uh, more education. Now, you may have some that just don't do it. Right. You know, and we have some that um, I'm still just trying to get an appointment with, but, you know, I'm I'm still trying. Okay. <laughs> can, 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 I'm, I'm going to interject on one. Uh, in, in, in this case, I have an example, and it was actually when we sent out uh, the invitation to attend this event, and I heard from a community organization and they had presented in 2018 and uh, at Investment Connection in uh, Colorado. And uh, they let me know, they said, hey, we're, 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 we're finalizing a uh, loan program. We're, and, and, you know, we met at Investment Connection. They checked off that they were interested in connecting. So it can take two years. So to the audience, I mean, this isn't necessarily um, – in some cases, probably the fastest I've had uh, one was uh, within three months. Uh, but in other cases, it's been, you know, in this case, it was two years. And, and Nancy, can you touch on this? But I, I wanted yeah. to share, and, and I've seen examples of it, um, and kind of tell us what, what you and maybe other bankers or other funders think about. But I've seen it as a, a multi-year. So once uh, – uh, an organization gets funded. Let's say they do an initial. Oh, okay, I'm going to give you five thousand dollars for this program. What have mm -hmm. you? Um, what's the likelihood of that continuing to the next year or even becoming multi-year? It all depends on the the proposal for submitted for the next year. So okay. let us know how the funds were used, what impact they made to the community. If it's great enough that we want to support again the next year, of course we most likely will. But if you say, oh, that $5,000 that you granted didn't really do much, <laughs> that's not really going to make me, us motivated to grant you some more. Unless there's a, you know, a reason why that $5,000 maybe wasn't enough to do something, so we need more um, funding for that. But, um, I mean, as a presenter of a proposal, I wouldn't assume that the bank is not interested, you know, simply because the bank hasn't called or reached out. 
I, mean, I would recommend that you follow up with the funders after a presentation. Just follow up. Follow up is a key. Maintaining the communication is a key. Okay. So one of the things that I've recommended, I didn't have it in my notes for today, Buzz, was to, to make sure that you continue that uh, relationship. And and thanks, I just heard from from, from Jim in Nebraska. Uh, well, it's 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 starting to build a, a relationship, and in many cases, a deeper relationship, and kind of sharing. Okay, let's add you to our. You know, maybe there's a quarterly newsletter so that you know what we're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. And and also, I had I have to admit, where was I? I think I was in Nebraska, and I did a session, and I had a banker. I'm not going to name the bank. I mean, uh, this was years ago, and he he basically said, you know. After they had funded, I, I don't know how many organizations that year, that he, he only received a thank you from a handful. Mm -hmm. And just the, the, that as far as, you know, so some, sometimes those basic things need mm -hmm. to occur as well as yeah. far as uh, just saying, hey, thank you. And maybe this is how we use the, you know, we, we completed the project or we applied it towards the project, those kinds of mm -hmm. things. I mean, it's not tied to investment connection. It's not tied to CRA. It's it's just these. Uh, I don't know if it's courtesies. It's just the follow up that may mm -hmm. need to occur. Yep. Uh, thoughts on that, Nancy? You as a funder, I mean, do you get thank yous and 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 uh, uh, kind of uh, updates from your organizations? Yeah, most of the time we do get thank yous, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> but um, again, when they ask for funding for the next year, we do request them to let us know how the funds were used. And okay. um, yeah, again, like you said, follow up is the key. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, like receiving the thank you letters. <laughs> yeah, and I, I would say, you know, we obviously are trying to build long term relationships. So mm -hmm. we uh, uh, featured that all of the banks in our annual report. And we have a, we had a map of Kansas with where the banks were. We, we didn't list how much, but we, we, uh, featured them in there. We also use them, you know, have thanked them on our social media and other ways. So, so, and then we send the annual reports to the uh, CEOs of those banks as well, because that's, I think that's really important um, to make sure that they know where, where that money, if you're going to ask for money again, you better let them know where the money went the first time around. Right. Cool. Uh, you know, I just got a a, a comment or or from um, Nebraska. Let's see, we're now in Southwest uh, Iowa because of investment connection in Omaha. All right. So I wasn't aware of that. Thank you so much. Uh, shoot me an email. Uh, this is from one of our uh, uh, participants, uh, Jim uh, Nebraska Enterprise Fund. Here. Um, uh, let's see. Question. If you're a nonprofit preparing to approach a bank, is it useful to review the most recent public CRA evaluation? Would it give you some additional insights? So, so their performance, uh, so just so that you know, uh, for the audience, part of the Community Reinvestment Act requires financial institutions, uh, to basically keep, uh, uh, their examination and so forth information available to, to you, and that's available. Uh, often it's on their website or it's something that you have to request the bank. But most cases, I think it's, it's now uh, in many cases on the website. And it kind of tells you what they did, how they were rated, what have you, by their regulatory agency. Uh, and it might be a useful tool in regards to appetite. Uh, Nancy, what do you or – in, or, and Steve, Nancy, why not you first as far as a performance evaluation uh, or, you know, what's out there in the public file? For CRI, yeah. do you think yeah. that? So our bank is outstanding, <laughs> and Great. that's always good to have. And of course, I mean, if you're interested in looking through the CRI public file or do the PE, uh, we welcome that. Um, you can learn a lot about what the bank does, um, how they're helping the community. So maybe it's a good tool to see if the, um, the service or the funding that you know you see the bank is you know strongly supporting if that fits yours. That will connect with. You know, your organization that you could ask for funding from that bank. If the bank has a lower rating, it doesn't mean that they're not trying <laughs> to get a higher rating or helping the community. So, I mean, I wouldn't use that as to say, oh, this bank is uh, needs to improve, so I'm not going to reach out to them. I wouldn't make, you know, the performance evaluation, you know, have you decide on that, that way to see if you want to approach them or not. 
And and Steve, any comments on that or? Yeah, I well, I I didn't know it existed for one, so I'd love oh. to. I would <laughs> love to. No, I would love to be able to look at that um, because you know our we have a large target market of banks, and you know I will say that I've when I've been we always ask every bank that we meet with how how important it is to what we're talking about and. Uh, uh, and in fact, we've had some banks. We had a, a large bank that was working on, on a loan program we developed for COVID response, and they actually, uh, and we allowed them to pick the, their their large bank and they had multiple locations. So they were able to pick where the funding went. We told them we can you can put them in where you, and so they picked areas where CRA was really important to them. And we were able to invest those funds in those markets. So we're, you know, the more, I'll be honest with you, we, you know, I, we first presented six or seven years ago um, at an investment connection in Lawrence or Manhattan or somewhere. And so um, we are, we're just now starting to figure it out. And like I said, one thing I would recommend is whoever your person that covers your state, uh, talk to them, uh, the Federal Reserve Bank person, because they can really give you some great insights. And that talking to Jeremy really helped me get our proposal moving forward in a, where we actually knew a little bit more about what we were talking about with regard to CRA. Okay. So, and, and yeah, just uh, FYI to, to everybody, so that's uh, uh, Steve in Oklahoma, Dell in, in Nebraska, Jeremy covers uh, – uh, Missouri and Kansas, and I cover Colorado, New Mexico, and Wyoming. So if you want to be in touch uh, as well. Uh, and don't forget to check our website. So one thing, and there is a, a program, Steve, uh, I will uh, mention it because of uh, uh, your, uh, what was it, in regards to the, on, on the Q&As, did one on understanding the CRA and benefits to your organization. So mm -hmm. I know there have been a couple of questions on CRA. So did that one. It's also available on CRA OneSource. So check it out. Again, the link will be at the end of the presentation. Uh, also, folks that asked about the presentation and, and so forth. Yes, we are recording this session. So it will be available and you'll be able to see the deck and all those kinds of things. Um, so let, let's go into kind of recommend, I'm, I'm kind of uh, a little bit off schedule here, but we're good. Great conversation, great questions. Keep them coming in, folks. Um, what recommendations do you have for funders uh, and or for community organizations that have either uh, presented at an IC session or, or uh, maybe already have a, a proposal? So anything that maybe you haven't touched on? Uh, Nancy, why don't we start with you? Um, so again, <laughs> the CRA offices are just really busy people. <laughs> so I mean, so, sometimes CRA department consists of only one or two people. So as a presenter of a proposal, again, don't assume that we're ignoring you. I uh, just recommend that you follow up with the funders um, after your presentation. Just follow up is a key. Okay. You know what? And I will bring it up um, uh, that. I, I've had some organizations speak. So here's j just so that everybody understands the process. So for organizations that uh, uh, are able to present either at place-based or virtual sessions and so forth, there is a form that we provide all the funders, and it's basically uh, it's basically uh, in regards to interest. It's a funder uh, uh, response form. That is not a commitment to fund to the funders in the room. It's basically saying I'm interested in learning more. Uh, you know, again, the investment connection proposal is just enough to whet the appetite. Uh, and and to, but it's not going to be necessarily everything that the funder needs to see, whether it's a bank or a foundation or government. It's just enough to give them enough information to basically say, oh, let me check out the website. Maybe I need to talk to them. Uh, before the pandemic, maybe it's like, oh, let me do a, a, a site visit, uh, meet the management team or, or, or tour the facility, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's a housing complex or whether it's a, a, a business support organization or maybe they're doing technology refurbishing, those kinds of things. Um, so the only time we hear 
uh, as far as of a connection, because we follow up with the community organizations. We don't follow up with the funders. And so uh, I leave it out there. And at the very end of, of the presentation today, I was going to ask, you know, uh, the funders uh, and community organization, if, if there's a connection that you've made utilizing investment connection, please let us know, uh, because we only hear about it um, if the community or when we reach out to the community organizations, they share that with us. And I'll give you a case in point, one that was quite interesting, uh, and it happened um, where uh, a community organization basically hadn't shared a – they shared one connection that they had with the bank, and they said, here's our CRA connection. Oh, and we had – by the way, we had some other connections uh, with foundations, and it was a $300,000 uh, uh -huh. contribution. But they thought we were only looking for the CRA connections. It was like, no, we're looking for all of it. So, uh, and, and that just shows, you know, for us, it's a, uh, where is, is this helpful for you? Is this helpful for the funders, uh, the funding community, all of them, you know, bankers, foundations, government, and is it helpful for community organizations? And so again, uh, as I was talking about the, 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 the low cost of entry, but with potential uh, high returns and so forth, I think it's uh, certainly uh, shown that. So let me let me see if I'm getting um, some other just, things. Just to talk about that, uh, the advice to community organizations, one of the things that, that we have found is identifying who the decision makers are. We learned, that, we learned that the hard way last year. Uh, there's one bank that's a billion dollar bank in Kansas, and we've been to like four market presidents and and still haven't got to the decision maker who would make the final decision. So there are some, you know, so when you do go into a bank, you know, I, I don't think it's offensive to ask who, who makes these decisions um, because there may be a local person that supports the idea, but they're not right. a decision maker. And so finding out, it's just like, you know, it's basically sales 101, who makes the decision um, on on this particular type of proposal. Okay. Well, why don't we move on um, kind of our discussion and uh, uh, for folks in the audience, I've asked Nancy and, and Steve to, to stay with us in regards to kind of some of the the best practices or, or, or in Q and A, uh, so that they can offer their insights. Uh, and to the audience, please continue submitting your your, your questions um, for uh, investment connection. So, kind of, let's start with some funders. I had that one uh, up. So, uh, reminder: proposals are coming uh, online regularly uh, across the district. So, check the site. Uh, unfortunately, it's not like an Amazon uh, site that basically says, you know, automated uh, to your, uh, your, your, uh, what is it, things that you've selected, you know, or, or your interests and so forth. Uh, that software we don't have, uh, maybe in the future, uh, that we can, we can have that. But I do want to say that we're adding proposals on a frequent basis. Um, Attend the place-based and virtual sessions if possible. I think it gives you a good idea of, 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 of a flavor of the, the organizations that are there and uh, what they're doing and so forth. And I think it gives you, um, you know, let's say, for example, that it's an organization, but it's not in your, for banks, in your assessment area or your market, what have you, or your footprint, depending on which language you'd like to use. Hopefully, it'll give you an idea of, of, of org types of organizations that may be in your market uh, that may be doing similar work, uh, assisting similar population. Uh, and that's the idea, again, of, of educating our constituency. Uh, use the online search feature. Adjust your review profile as needed. Uh, if, if you go too granular, it, it may uh, not to give you all the proposals that you'd like to see, as I said before. Uh, look at some of those opportunities. I know I had a banker at one session, I can't remember, I think it was in Oklahoma, and said, you know, all I'm looking for is, is lending opportunities. Um, you know, you may have to open it up. Uh, I will say that one of the last reviews that I had, 40% uh, of the proposals were asking for loans uh, and investments. 
and about 60% were asking for investment slash grants. So, you know, that, 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 that kind of funding. So there still are some lending, but if you can open it up a little bit more, uh, that might be an opportunity. And also not to forget, uh, to look at CD service, you know, because there might be some opportunities. The other thing that I will say is even though an organization, uh, might be, uh, investment only, investment slash grant, um, there might be opportunities for, you know, lines of credit or other services uh, where you might be able to assist them uh, as an organization. Uh, and, and Nancy's ideas in regards to, you know, a, a marketing person or an IT person uh, expertise that might be available. So that could be very helpful. Um, oh, yes. Check uh, the additional attachments uh, with the proposal. So. Uh, I'm going to have Lori confirm, but I think we uh, allow three additional attachments, uh, and that's uh, uh, PDFs, and it could be a video link or even a, a, a short video, uh, because I think those are another way for you to learn a little bit more about the organization. Uh, and for community organizations, it's kind of a benefit for both. Uh, it's a great way to tell your story. Uh, without, you know, additional copy in the proposal, but it could be, you know, I've had, uh, clips of, you know, a, a news article that was, that was covered or a PDF of, of a, of an event or something like that. Uh, and, and for those of you that funders that attend the, uh, virtual sessions, live sessions, what have you, completing a funder response form is not a commitment to fund. It simply shares, you know, your interest in learning more. So, uh, and we then share that with the community organization. And as you know, we don't follow up with the, 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 the financial institutions. We wait to hear from, so the community organization as far as, uh, their connection. Uh, and so let's go to the next bullet. Unless, uh, Nancy, Steve, anything to add to that? I think you covered it. Okay. Nancy, you good? Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, there is a, a, a question. Uh, uh, so in regards to proposals to present our live events, uh, we basically have uh, somewhere to eight to 10, depending on the timing. And we've tried to, to cut down presentation time on the, the, the sessions. We're limited because of, you know, uh, of funders can, and, and, and people can only sit for, for so long. Uh, and, and then it's like, okay, enough. Um, and so that, uh, does the system, no, we don't push notifications, uh, as far as an automated system. Uh, what we do is, uh, we will send a, an email communication, uh, typically on a quarterly basis in regards to, you, you may have seen an email. Oh, what was it? Maybe a few weeks ago. And it's kind of similar to got milk. It's like got funding. Uh, and so, it, you know, basically as we approach end of year, there are some uh, uh, funders that basically have some remaining funds that may be trying to get it out uh, uh, to community organizations. So it's, it's, we we're pushing the online site to basically say, go check it out, see if there's other uh, uh, organizations that you'd like to fund, uh, might be able to fund uh, during this time. So. Uh, let's see. So we don't push out uh, and that side. The other thing that we do is check out our community connections articles. As I mentioned, we did one recently with Steve, uh, or kind of highlighting his, uh, uh, success as far as, uh, promoting his investment connection proposal and, and securing some additional funding. So let me go into organizations with or submitting proposals. Uh, as I said, it's, uh, Fairly easy, quite intuitive as far as to complete a proposal. I'd say less is more. We do have character limits on the proposal form. It does not mean please don't go all the way to the to fill out the entire box. Uh, I think if you can tighten the language, all the better. Uh, I still consider it low cost of entry with with high potential. Uh, this is your opportunity to, to hopefully secure some funding, but if um, it, I still continue to believe it's uh, an opportunity um, to share information about your organization, what you're doing, and and uh, about the topic or your area of focus. You know, whether it's homelessness, whether it's digital inclusion, whether it's workforce or small business. 
you know, whatever the case may be, opportunity to talk to share your information with funders as to what you're doing and how it, uh, uh, you are having an impact in the community. So educate and inform. Um, you'll, uh, again, need your most recent reviewed or audited financials. It's a PDF with an opinion uh, from your, you know, from uh, your accountant. Uh, again, we've had cases where we receive a balance sheet or a budget. Those are not acceptable. And again, when we created the program, this was uh, what funders were asking for. They said, you know, we want to make sure that these are seasoned organizations or that have a certain level of capacity uh, and audited uh, financials, reviewed financials are basically a proxy uh, for that to basically say that there, there is some financial capacity uh, uh, for, for those organizations. Again, it's not a, a, a full guarantee. Uh, but it's, it's, and we leave that up to the funders to basically do their due diligence as they review proposals and organizations and so forth. Uh, you'll need, um, income. This also ties into, to CRA. So it must be, you know, CRA eligible and so forth. And that's where we're focused on population that's 80% or below of area median income. Uh, small business, it certainly has its criteria as far as revenue size and so forth. Small farm revenue size, the, the, the area of economic development. Uh, all of that we have in, in our toolbox of CRA one source in regards to CRA. Uh, but it is important uh, in one of the areas we talk about income of your population served. So we don't need income of the entire state, what have you, but of your uh, population that you're serving in many cases. So use your intake data and you can also use proxies such as uh, you know, if you're serving, let's say, youth, you can use uh, free and reduced lunch uh, uh, as a proxy, uh, percent of population using Medicaid uh, uh, as a proxy for your population serve. So there's different tools. All of those uh, resources as far as free and reduced lunch and so forth, go to CRA One Source and you can see the link. So you can check for your schools or your, your geography. Uh, Consider, you know, as, as, as Steve has done, consider marketing your approved proposal with funders. Uh, you know, uh, we have our virtual events and so forth, but there's things that you can do uh, to make sure that that is, is, is uh, word is getting out. And then similar to I said to the funders to not to forget the attachments that are there, uh, there's also the opportunity to um, submit um, a video, video link, or uh, some PDFs and so forth uh, with your proposal. So that might be uh, helpful. And again, it's a great way to, to share a story in regards to who you are as an organization and what you're doing in your community. So um, Nancy, Steve, other things to add for organizations? Uh, the only thing I would say is that we actually uh, after we talk with somebody, we actually send the PDF of that proposal so they have a copy of it too after we presented. So we found that to be a very great, uh, you know, leave behind or send back to the to the uh, uh, funder. Okay, great. Yeah, it's a good idea. Nancy, anything that you would add? I think that's a good idea what Steve does, especially if there's something that you might have missed during the proposal. You can just send them an extra attachment that you wanted to share with them. All right. Okay. Let's see what else. So let's uh, moving on then. Kind of some of the the other news uh, that we have. So CRA modernization. This is just kind of some of the things coming up. Uh, comments. So this is part of creating, generating awareness, and hopefully your feedback. Uh, and this is feedback again from. Uh, the, the funding community, financial, regulated financial institutions from community organizations, state, et cetera. Uh, it's, it's uh, comments by February 16th, 2021, CRA modernization. Uh, basically also did a, a push in regards to an email blast a few weeks ago, kind of some of the areas of focus. There's, uh, just so you know, there's 99, uh, questions that are asked in the, advanced notice of proposed rulemaking. So this is your opportunity to help uh, with CRA modernization. The last major change was in 1995 uh, to the regulation and, and it was uh, put in place uh, 
or passed in 1977. So FYI. Uh, response to COVID-19 interagency statements. Want to make you aware that those are also um, all posted on uh, CRA OneSource and actually uh, with CRA modernization, the link as well for viewing the AMPR and also for the link for making comments is also out there. So you have all of that. Uh, and then Investment Connection 2021. So uh, planning on that at this point in time, see those all as being uh, virtual sessions, uh, unless there's some changes uh, later in 2021, as far as if they'd be place-based, what have you. Um, so let's see, let me check on questions, see if there's any that I have missed. It looks like we're, Good on that. Uh, okay. All right. Slide ten. Let's let me see if. Oh, and check the website. Make sure you're you're, you're staying checking the website, and also make sure you're receiving our newsletters and so forth. And there's ways to subscribe. Uh, as we move on, kind of towards the end here. Um, here are the investment connection and CRA one source uh, links. Um, and as we wrap up, uh, my thanks to, to Nancy Markawa and Steve Radley uh, for joining us for their comments and sharing their experience with, with us uh, as they work with Investment Connection. Um, Justin Cook, our producer for today's session, and Lori Growth uh, also co-producing and on the Investment Connection team. Uh, just as a reminder, if you have a success story to share with us, uh, please let us know. Uh, we've, you know, connected over 42 million uh, in funding connections, a lot of in-kind donations, lots of computers and so forth uh, that have also occurred through investment connection and also service opportunities uh, that have been connected. But, you know, we don't, unless you share that with us uh, as community organizations, what's occurred or we hear it from the uh, uh, we're funders, we're not gonna hear about it often, unless you let me know. So uh, please let us know about that. We'd like to feature that in, in upcoming articles. Um, uh, and to our audience, I hope you come away with some helpful takeaways. Let us know how we can assist. Uh, thank you for everybody, for uh, the audience, for the work that you do in our communities to make our communities better places. Uh, for everyone. Uh, don't see any additional questions. Again, Steve, Nancy, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to our audience. Thanks, thank everybody. And we are adjourned. Thanks so much.